Hey everyone, it's Kenji, and we're gonna make some garlic noodles. So, these are a classic San Francisco treat. Um, not the San Francisco treat, which is rice aroni, but a San Francisco treat, which I didn't really know was a thing until I moved to the Bay Area. Um, I live, you know, like 20 miles south of San Francisco. I didn't know this was a thing until I moved to the Bay Area. I'd never heard of them before. Um, but it was created by Vietnamese American immigrants um, at a restaurant called Ten Long, uh, which is in the outer sunset up in San Francisco, uh, where I've been to. Um, typically served with roast crab, roast Dungeness crab. So Dungeness crab is another San Francisco treat, which is not the San Francisco treat, which is rice aroni, but it is another San Francisco treat. Um, that said, um, as my neighbor and colleague and someone who I consider a dear friend, even though I've never met him uh, and don't, you know, we've barely interacted, but he feels like a friend because he makes everyone feel like a friend in his videos. Uh, Chef John of Food Wishes um, has said on his video for the same dish, this dish goes with pretty much anything um, and you can eat it on its own, which is what I'm doing. Um, my recipe is a little bit different from his, but they're all basically the same sort of process. You start with noodles. Um, you can use Chinese hand pulled noodles or fresh egg noodles. Um, I'm just using spaghetti. This is, a, this is some good old Rayo's spaghetti. Um, and then I'm gonna take some garlic and let's see, I need a little mortar and pestle. Where'd my mortar and pestle go? I moved everything around. Where did it go? Well, I'll use my I'll use my multi head thing for now. This will work fine. All right. So I got about a dozen cloves of garlic. So I'm going to be making enough for two to three people. So half a pound of spaghetti. That's about you know 230 grams ish, 220 grams I think if you're uh, if you're using real units. Um, this is just the pre-peeled garlic that I get from the uh, you know you can get buy it at the supermarket pre-peeled. It's not the best. If I if I really cared about perfect garlic flavor right now, I would be uh, peeling fresh cloves off of a head of garlic. Um, the the reason is because when when you buy peel, pre-peeled garlic, um, to peel them, uh, the garlic gets blanched briefly first, and that kind of deactivates some of the um, the flavor in there, some of the allicin forming compounds. Um, and uh, that was my buddy Brad Leone. He's my new internet buddy Brad Leone um, knows allicin. Uh, Allison is, an, Allison is important for garlic flavor. Um, that said, you know, this stuff is all right. What I would avoid using is um, pre-minced garlic because that stuff has very little actual garlic flavor left in it. Um, Brad and I, Brad Leone and I are now working on a project together. We're making um, a salt box, a salt cellar. Um, people ask me about this one all the time, which I got uh, from an ex-girlfriend who bought it in, in the UK. Um, and people ask me where I got it and where they can find a similar one to it because it's so nice for salt. It's one finger operation. Um, the hinge is broken on this one, but the ones that Brad and I are building will not be broken. Um, it's nice and wide so you can pick up salt easily. Anyhow, so we're building um, something similar to these out of reclaimed uh, Walnut. You can look, go check my social, the social section of my um, of my account, and you'll find uh, you'll find some news about that project. It's coming. It's coming. Um, so add a little bit of salt to your garlic when you smash it in the mortar and pestle because it helps uh, as far as abrasiveness goes. Oh, I know my my other internet buddy um, Adam Ragusia. I know in one of his videos he speculated that salt actually aids more in the pounding of garlic through osmosis rather than um, uh, abrasiveness. Um, he's wrong about that, and I know because I've done tests on this. Um, so if it was just osmosis, you would expect that um, the more finely ground the salt is, so if you use like powdered salt, it would work much better than coarse ground salt because it would dissolve faster and osmosis would take place faster, but it doesn't. Um, coarse salt actually works faster and better for uh, breaking down garlic or whatever it is you're going to be pounding in here. Now maybe at the end, like once it starts to turn to a paste like this, um, osmosis comes into effect. Uh, but at this stage, no matter what salt you use, it's going to all have dissolved anyway. So anyhow, yeah, you add it in there for the abrasiveness. Um, you can also just hand chop that garlic if you feel. All right, so for each quarter pound of pasta, we're gonna do about one and a half tablespoons of butter. This is a super fusion-y dish, by the way, you'll see. And I'm gonna get, get that going in this, uh, 
walk I got here. This walk is um, a model I'm testing that my my friends at I got a lot of internet buddies. My internet buddies at uh, Food Fifty Two. Um, they they make the cutting board that has the little cell phone holder in it that I sometimes use in my kitchen that you have probably seen if you watch this channel. Um, but they're coming out with this new carbon steel wok um, intended for western ranges. So I've been uh, testing it for them a little bit so that I can give them some feedback. So far it's pretty nice. You know it has a much wider um, flat bottom than most flat bottom woks do and I'm not positive how I feel about that yet. It definitely makes it more difficult for me to stir fry but on the other hand it makes it more versatile for other things. Um, I don't know how I feel about that yet. Well, I, I need to put a little bit more thought into it. All right, so moderate heat. Um, this is about medium low right now and I'm just gonna let that butter mostly melt. And then I'm gonna come back in with my garlic. Garlic in there. I first had this dish actually at Tan Long um, and the Outer Sunset when I when I first moved to San Francisco and some uh, friends of mine here wanted to show me some real a real San Francisco treat, um, not rice aroni, which is the real San Francisco treat, but a San Francisco treat. Um, and I foolishly um, I borrowed my friend's I didn't have a car at the time, so I borrowed my friend's moped Vespa um, and rode it from. Um, the uh, the mission where I was living at the time rode it from the mission to the outer sunset um, through the hills uh, at night and I very foolishly assumed that San Francisco can't get that cold at night and so I was wearing shorts and a t-shirt um, and then on my way home like late at night when it was dark at like 9 or 10 p.m. and it was freezing cold out because it gets real cold in San Francisco at night um, all the time uh, freezing cold going back uh, on a Vespa with shorts and a t-shirt on a San Francisco night. Not a good idea. Um, anyhow, all right, so the garlic, we don't want it to burn or brown too much. We just want it to sort of gently give up its aroma to that butter. Um, so as soon as you start seeing it turn even slightly brown like that, right now it's done. Um, now I'm gonna come in here with about a couple teaspoons of, that's light soy sauce. It's a few big squirts of fish sauce, probably a couple teaspoons of that too. And then this, which is oyster sauce. This is uh, Lee Kum Kee oyster sauce, the, the fancier one. It's the one with the, with the little boy and the mother on the, on the boat, boat with the oysters as opposed to the one with like the panda on the cover. Um, this one has more oyster in it. Um, the first ingredient, this is what you want to check for when you buy oyster sauce. Um, the first ingredient should be premium oyster extract or some, something like that, oyster extract. All right, so it's like garlic and butter and ultra umami. You can sort of think of this as like you know, Vietnamese alio olio, so it's butter and garlic. And then things are gonna get even crazier in a second after this pasta's done. Let me taste how it's doing. Here are you. Whew. Why am I having so much trouble with these today? Let me get my Smaller sticks. Those sticks are those big sticks of mine are starting to warp, which makes it really hard to grab with the tip. All right, we are pretty much done there. So we're late. We're waiting for that to get just sort of barely, just shy of al dente. Not quite. Not quite fully cooked. A little bit chalky in the center still, but mostly al dente is what we're looking for. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to. Dump it in here with whatever liquid happens to come with it. I'm not gonna be careful about straining that liquid off. By the way, this pasta, um, I cooked in a skillet, you can see, that sort of concentrates the starchiness, which is good for a dish like this because it makes the sauce creamy. Um, but I did not salt that pasta water at all. Um, and the reason I don't salt the pasta water is because there are so many salty elements um, in this sauce, the soy sauce and the fish sauce and the um, oyster sauce, that if you salt that pasta water at all, it makes the whole thing too salty. So no salt in the pasta water. 
Um, by the way, you know, soy sauce, fish sauce, and oyster sauce, those are common ingredients. You don't have to use all three of them. You could use a, a, sub-select, a, a sub-selection, a sub- subset of them. Um, you could also use uh, Maggi seasoning, so yeast extract, um, or Worcestershire sauce is also a common ingredient in this. Um, any of those things, you really just want sort of umami-rich sauces. Um, and finally, I'm going in here with some cheese. So this is Pecorino Romano. Um, Typically, you, you would use Parmesan in this. Parmesan and fish sauce, right? Um, this is Pecorino Romano just because I like the flavor of it and I happen to have some, but you can do whatever you like. Um, any kind of hard grating cheese is what you're after. I'm just gonna give it a hard stir. And you can see how nice and creamy that sauce has gotten from the reduced pasta sauce um, pasta water emulsifying with the butter and the other ingredients. Um, you know what I'm going to do to finish this off? I'm going to add some... So this is done as is, but I'm going to... I got some scallion, so I'm going to add a thin sliced scallion. And uh, you know, I'm going to add also... I think this will be good. This is um, tarako, which is a Japanese salted um, cod row that comes sort of in, in its egg sac, um, and I grill it, and then we, we eat this for, crumble it over rice and eat it for breakfast. Um, something I grew up eating uh, and that I can find here. This is definitely not a normal ingredient in, um, in uh, garlic noodles, but I think it'll be delicious. Um, sort of similar, it's sort of similar to, you know, it's, a, it's the Japanese version of Italian uh, botarga, which is also um, salted, cured, I believe mullet row, maybe it's cod row. Anyhow, some kind of salted cured tiny fish eggs that are delicious on pasta. Not being too careful about how I slice these scallions. All right. Let's leave some off for garnish. And the rest will go right in here. And we'll just let, toss them and let the um, residual heat of that pan and pasta cook them. And so if it starts to get a little bit too tight like this has, just add a splash more pasta water to thin it out. Um, and the one thing to remember with pasta is that like eggs, um, it's going to tighten up a little bit and get a little bit sort of drier once it's in the plate. So you always want to make sure that your pasta is slightly looser than you want it in the pan than it's going to be on the plate. This looks about perfect to me. All right. So let's just plate this out. See how nice and creamy that sauce has become? And boy oh boy, is it garlicky. This would go really well, obviously with um, ro roasted crab, uh, but also, you know, it could go really well with sauteed shrimp, grilled shrimp, any kind of sort of seafood I think it goes really well with. But as our friend Chef John said, it goes well on anything. So I'm gonna finish it off with Some more scallions, and then some of this salted cod roe. All right. How does that look to everyone? I think it looks pretty great. Let's go uh, eat some by the window. Looks good. Smells good. How's the taste? Hmm. Tastes real good. Oh boy. Hmm. Sorry guys, you can't have the garlic, but you know what? Here. 
That's a little bit too garlicky for the dogs, but they can get a little. Sit. Good girl. Little cheese snack. All right. Garlic noodles. A San Francisco treat, not the San Francisco treat, which is rice a um, Everyone take care. Um, stay healthy. Eat well. Um, guys, gals, non-binary pals, I will see you next time. Bye.